We don't have to wait long, just until next year, to witness how justice will prevail and Russia will be constantly bombarded from the air by Ukrainian drones, Ukrainian expert and journalist Ivan Yakovina reported. The journalist is convinced that we have started mass producing drones quite quickly, which means that massive strikes on enemy military facilities will soon become the norm for them. Ivan Yakovina spoke about this in his latest video on the YouTube channel. The political observer delighted Ukrainians with his forecast. Ukraine is now gradually increasing its capabilities for delivering long-range strikes against Russia, both quantitatively and qualitatively. This area will most likely continue to develop, and if this development continues at least at the same pace as it is now, then in 2025, that is next year, and it is not that long before that, the quantity of strikes against Russian territory, I think, will grow into quality, and throughout central Russia, including Moscow and the Moscow region, air raid sirens will constantly sound, and some strikes will constantly be carried out. Russia will not be able to do anything against this simply because there will be insufficient resources. It will be very difficult, practically impossible for Putin to wage war in such conditions. Hitler got something similar when, in 1944 and 1945, essentially all of Germany was on fire due to constant Allied air raids. That is, airstrikes were carried out on various German targets. Ivan Yakovina emphasized, Recall recently Ukraine targeted the Russian capital in its biggest drone attack so far, killing at least one and wrecking dozens of homes in the Moscow region and forcing around 50 flights to be diverted from airports around Moscow. Russia, the world's biggest nuclear power, said it had destroyed at least 20 Ukrainian attack drones as they swarmed over the Moscow region, which has a population of more than 21 million and 124 more over eight other regions. At least one person was killed near Moscow, Russian authorities said. Three of Moscow's four airports were closed for more than six hours and almost 50 flights were diverted. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov told reporters that the drone attack was another reminder of the real nature of Ukraine's political leadership, which he said was made up of Russian enemies. There is no way that nighttime strikes on residential neighborhoods can be associated with military action, said Peskov. The Kyiv regime continues to demonstrate its nature. They are our enemies and we must continue the special military operation to protect ourselves from such actions, he said, using the expression Moscow uses to describe its war in Ukraine. The statement was made against the background of how Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. Against the background of warming relations between the regime and Russia, the Taliban announced their intention to build air defenses in Afghanistan with the help of Russian equipment. And if in recent months, as it turned out, Moscow is ready to arm the Houthis in Yemen and even Hezbollah in Lebanon with modern missiles, it may not be so ready for the current ruling regime in Kabul, writes Forbes. In early 2023, less than two years after reconquering Afghanistan amid a chaotic US withdrawal, the Taliban allocated the largest share of Afghanistan's defense budget, declaring their intention to build air defenses. Anti-aircraft missiles are a need of the country. There is no doubt that Afghanistan is trying and doing everything possible to get them, said Taliban commander Kari Fasihuddin Fitrata and the army chief of staff. On August the 29th, General Syed Abdul Basir Saberi, chief of logistics at the Taliban-controlled Afghan Ministry of Defense, was much more blunt. I think we need equipment for air defense and airspace control. We have ground equipment. I think we will buy such products from you at the international level when the international legal conditions for this appear," Saberi said. It is noted that a few years ago it was impossible to imagine that the Taliban could make such a request. But Saberi's statement was made during a period of warming relations, an example of which was Moscow's invitation to the St. Petersburg Forum in May. Saberi's comments suggest that the group hopes that warming relations could lead to the purchase of weapons. The statement also came after Russia recently demonstrated its readiness to arm the Houthis with anti-ship missiles and transfer the Pantsir S-1 medium-range air defense system to Hezbollah through Syria. The transfer of armor to the Taliban or short and medium-range systems such as the Buck and Thor would undoubtedly alarm the United States. After withdrawing troops in August 2021, the U.S. killed Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in an over-the-horizon drone strike in central Kabul where the Taliban were hosting him. 
The advanced air defense system in Afghanistan may make it difficult to carry out similar operations using drones. In March, the Taliban said that American drones were patrolling and violating the country's airspace. There is also a serious risk that any air defenses Russia supplies to the group could endanger civilian aviation. Afghanistan's airspace has become one of the main routes between Europe and Asia, and many airlines that previously avoided it for years have increased the number of flights over the country amid heightened tensions in the Middle East between Israel and Iran.